Hi guys, my name is Bart Kamski and in this tutorial I'm going to show you adaptive system for a wind I make for my game Wildlife Rescue Simulator and it sounds and works like this when I'm here far away from any walls the wind is strong but when I go close to the wall or some closed space like this cave the wind goes silent And I'm making this using line trace that detects the walls around me and I'm gonna show you how to do it. And this is the game Wildlife Rescue Simulator. I'm working right now. Uh, there is a Steam page already, so the link is down below. Please add it to the wish list. That will help me a lot. Okay, let's go to the tutorial. So let's open the first project. First of all, you need to get these sounds. The link is down below, so we can download this wind loops uh, and use it, use it in your project. So first of all, if you already have it, let's get and create a queue out of it. Let's open it. Here it is. Let's, it's already plugged, but we can delete this and just get both of them here and what I want to do these these are the this is the uh, regular wind which is calm wind that it's gonna be always in the background and this is the hard wind that is loud and we will change the amplitude of this wind so that's what we're gonna do here uh, so we add continuous modulator to this wind and we change its volumes, its volume parameter. So let's just call it wind. So we can change its value between zero and one with uh, blueprints. And we can just mix both of these. And here we can set up, maybe we, we want to add a little louder, the second one a little bit louder. So let's do that. And here we're gonna change dynamically this wind. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the first person blueprints and here's our first person character, but we're not going to do it in first person character. We're going to make a component, actor component for it. So let's go to actors and choose actor component and let's name it wind AC actor component. That's great. And now we can go to first person character and add our wind AC. Here it is. Great. Okay, so let's go. Let's go here. And we're gonna start with just at the begin plate spawning sound 2D. We're gonna use spawn instead of play because we need to uh, get this sound, the reference to the sound here so let's get our wind sound here and let's put it here let's attach it to the begin play and here we're gonna promote this to variable and let's name it wind ref this is our sound and from here we can change amplitude of our sound and now we should be able to hear the sound when we start again yes we do Yes, we do. Both sounds are playing uh, full, full volume. But if we get the sound and we set its parameters, set param, set uh, scale, what is it? Float, set float parameter. Yep. And our parameter name was wind. So we name it wind. And let's just for fun set it up here to zero, just to check if it works. Yeah, there's no hard sound, but if it's one, it is hard sound. Okay, so let's let's go and make a system for detecting the uh, walls around around us. So what we're gonna do? We can uh, remove this from here. We don't need to. Uh, check the sound on every frame. Line traces are kind of expensive and we, we want to have more than just one because we want to detect sound around us, walls around us. We don't have to do it every frame. Uh, from my experience is that we can do it 10 times a second 
maybe even five times a second and it's still gonna be good enough. So let's set up the timer, set timer by event, let's connect it here, let's set it up, it's time to 0.1, let's set it up to looping and let's set it up custom event right here and say wind walls detect. Okay, and here what we're gonna do is we're gonna use for loop and here we're gonna promote it to the variable and set it up number of traces. But since our loop starts with zero, if we want to be exact, exact we need to uh, subtract one from this. So when it starts from zero and we set up this to let's say eight, we will actually have eight line traces, not nine. Okay, and now what we're gonna do, we're gonna change it to float because uh, working with float dividing and, and uh, subtracting and everything is easier than working with integers and float. Uh, so we're gonna divide this and actually what we're gonna do is, uh, yes, we're gonna use this line trace and also change it to float. What happened here? Sorry. We're also gonna change to float and yes, we're gonna divide uh, 360 by our number of traces. So we're gonna, if we have eight traces, we're gonna send traces all around us with given angle, which is 360 divided by eight. If you're gonna have only four of them, it's gonna be every 90 degrees. Uh, okay, and now the what we have here, we can multiply by this and now we gonna use line trace by channel and start we gonna get actor get uh, no actor get player character or player pawn whatever you have I have a character so I'm using player character and we're gonna get actor something's wrong get actor location and this is going to be start of our line trace and the end going to be all around us so we're going to use this for loop that going to gives us angles um, so we're going to add this and here we're going to rotate rotate vector and we can uh, set up let's say 400 here so this is gonna be length of our line trace you can make a variable out of it but I'm gonna I'm gonna just type it here because I'm not gonna change it and let's break rotation break break rotation sorry make rotation of course make make rotator yes so what we have here, we have this vector that is four meters long and we're gonna rotate it. Every single of these vectors is gonna be rotated by the angle, which is uh, this angle multiplied by the index. So it's gonna be zero, 90, 180, 270, and that's all. If we have four, if this number of traces is four. Okay, let's plug it here and this is going to be end of our line trace and let's set up uh, for duration and duration going to be 0.1 which is the same as here and let's see if this works. Okay, apparently it is. We can escape the game and we see we have nice eight line traces here. That's great. Now, uh, what we need to do is we're going to break this line trace, this out hit of the line trace, and we're going to get time. So time, we can print it to show you what it, what it does. Basically, time gives back number one if we, do, if we don't hit anything, but number smaller than one if we hit something. 
but also let's set it up this for 0.1 so we see only eight yes so it's one because our line choices don't hit anything but as soon as we hit anything and we we are hide here so here almost every line, line trace except one is hitting something and it's going it, it is very short so when line trace hit something at the very beginning its number is zero and we can see this as if we get closer this line trace is going to be smaller and smaller and smaller okay so now what we're going to do is gonna promote this to variable so we're gonna um, let's name it time because it, uh, it, it that that's okay and we're gonna add this time to this so we're gonna add all the values of all of those line traces we have and we're gonna add it here but what we have to do now is every time it it does the checking it checks the distance we need to reset it because if we don't we're gonna add and it's gonna grow infinitely we don't want it every time we're gonna reset this value to zero and actually what we want now is we can get this time right here let's move it here at at the very end at the end of every loop we can check this time and if we don't hit anything it should be number eight because we have eight line traces but if yeah it is eight but if we start hitting something it's going to close and here in very close environment it is close to two so very low number but if we want to be super super exact about it we can divide it by our number of line traces so it's always gives us the full non occluded line traces are uh, gives us value one and that's why we divided by number of traces okay we have one goes here and if we are really high we have 0.29 great so now we have this number and what we can do with it we can use even event tick because we can detect once uh, uh, once uh, uh, 10 times a second but we can we should change the uh, volume of the sound on every tick this is a little little trick to uh, kind of uh, cheat our ears so we're gonna um, take this time and we can what we can do is we can um, let's let's do it one more thing let's here also get our time and let's set up our time so this time here is already divided by numbers so we have clean action that this is one is not occluded zero is fully occluded no matter the number of traces so here let's duplicate it because what we want to do is we want to inter interpolate so let's name it time interp and let's just set it and get it and get interp interpolation finter 2 that's great because let's check what we have what's the row time looks like and we can see it kind of skips it's not fluent you see it kind of skips it isn't fluent it's not works on every second but if we interpolate it nicely so let's plug current here target hill delta time here and let's set up speed for let's say five and set up the time interpolated right here let's see how it looks right now let's start with zero but we can change that you see it goes 
it interpolates. We can make it faster. Let's set it up to 10. Okay, cool. You see, it is... Okay. Uh, what we can do here is we can set up this line trace uh, a bit higher at the level of our ears. So if we jump up, we can hear the difference or see the difference. So let's add, let's say, 50 centimeters in the Z axis. So it goes from our head, more our head than our body. You see like this. And here you can see that it changes when we jump up. Okay, so now what we have to do is really simple. We can just grab this value, our wind, and connect it here. And uh, let's see how this works. Oh, it doesn't. Really? Something's not, something's not working. I wonder why. Okay, I know, I know what was going on. There are, there are two things I forgot about. One is that it has to loop. I forgot about it, so if you select these two sounds in content, uh, in uh, queue, you have to select looping on both of them. So this is the first thing, and uh, here it should start, I'm not sure about that, but I set up the time interpretation to 1 by default, but let's check if it is 0, it should work. Yeah. We can hear it here. So it works now. You have to change it to loop. Sorry, sorry for that. That's my mistake. So as we can see, even if we are very narrow place, the lowest value is something about 0.3. So what we can do here is we can uh, map this value from zero from zero point three to one and set it up zero point three to zero and one. So if we are in this very narrow place, we can uh, go down with the hard wind to the to the zero. So here it is more apparent. So yeah, it works fluently, so if you are in the corner, it's something like that. If you are only next to the wall, something like that. If you are on open space right here, but if you are in the cave, it goes to zero. Of course, you can change those values however you want. And also, if you want to make it more efficient, you can change this time to maybe 0.2 and maybe change number of traces from eight to maybe even four or maybe let's let's set it up to six it still should work fine yeah it is still fine so once again thanks for watching and i use this uh, mechanics this uh, wind in my game wildlife rescue simulator the link is down below please add it to wishlist it will help me a lot guys thanks for watching and see you next time